and welcome back to the channel everybody welcome back to another new video where today I'm gonna talk about the seven things I kind of sort of don't like <laughs> or in some cases hate about my 2023 Dodge Challenger scat pack swinger special edition that I just picked up about three months ago and yes there are some things I don't like but let me just get this out of the way I love this car I don't think I've ever loved a car more than I love this car this car is absolutely gorgeous looks perfect in every possible way I mean how do you improve upon perfection well in this video I'll share with you how they could have improved a few things on this thing and definitely could have went a little bit different direction with some stuff on this thing even though it was the last year they're ever gonna make this car and the first thing before we jump in the car and I talk about something else real quick is this door handle so when you grab this door handle if you put your hand like this it fights you well You, it fights you this thing fights you like crazy but if you go you just take take a breath walk up a guy told me don't put your hand anywhere near the top and just lift and it won't it'll it'll go there you go and you'll be able to get in but it's definitely not the first time around sometimes it is sometimes it isn't but nonetheless if you're being chased by horrible crowd a crew of zombies a horde of zombies a gaggle of zombies you are going to die. They're going to eat you. You're done. That's it. You're a zombie food. You're not getting in this thing because it will fight you every other time. And sometimes it's no problem. But now let's jump in, start this thing up, and just talk about something I just changed and gave you all an option to be part of if you so choose, which is channel memberships. So I've had so many of my YouTube friends tell me that I need to start YouTube memberships, it's a great thing, and I haven't done it. It's been available to me ever since they started it, whenever that was. I keep seeing the notification, start your memberships, start your channel memberships, your people can join, they get special emojis, they get a special you know, back wall to go see you know exclusive content and all this cool badges and all kinds of cool stuff. Well, I didn't do it, I just haven't done it. And it's been a conscious decision not to do it because I try not to seem like that guy that's just gonna charge you something just for the sake of charging you something am i here to make money absolutely i'm here to make money and i am absolutely unashamed of that i will never be ashamed of pursuing i don't know money as long as i'm doing it ethically with integrity and i'm not doing something shady and that's kind of how i would have felt had i launched channel memberships you know months ago because i didn't feel like there was anything that i wouldn't share with you for free on the open channel that i would want to share with you privately i even have a patreon patreon.com forward slash oc motivator you've never heard me even mention it but I, there's so much content there so many great personally written articles stories you can go and so much of it is free you can just you don't have to pay anything but then there's additional places where people have chosen to sign up and actually go into coaching programs going into one-on-one -on -one life coaching personal coaching this kind of stuff. Do I ever promote it to you all? No. I've been using it as a, somebody's pushing me, wants to connect, wants to get into a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So I created a completely separate offshoot of this channel for those people. And I'm telling you, it's cheap to get into that. But I'm not promoting that. Don't go sign up. Go read the free content. And if it makes your life better, awesome. But if you're in a place where you need help, there's a way to go get it. And the whole purpose of starting that thing was, it got to a place to where I was spending so much time typing on Instagram DM messages with people that I turned into this personal life coach with people for literally weeks on end and I couldn't I couldn't keep up and then I started letting people down and then I realized well you know what I'm doing all this for free yet I and, and that's very rewarding yet I can't now do it for everybody so people who are saying what could I could I get involved with you on that base yes absolutely you can so that's there don't sign up here's my anti sales pitch don't sign up unless you're out there searching for something to sign up for and you need someone to walk you through business and life and finance and all that stuff then go do it and I will be there for you and you can cancel if you don't like it I'll give your money back I don't even care but it's there I just started it one day like it's probably been a year the thing's been sitting there so and I put tons of content there but I never want to be that guy pushing that stuff it's there if somebody wants to be part of it I just I don't even have time 
to be dedicating all kinds of time. If I even limited the amount of people that can get into these things, so it's it's really small amounts. And I also made it to where people were signing up for all these three, four, five hundred dollar a month, thousand dollar a month things with people who are not necessarily qualified to be doing things for people. And that's what inspired me to start it. And I made it like a hundred dollars, some ridiculously cheap amount. And I mean, even less ways to get into that thing, and a lot of free stuff, just to save people from signing up for people who are just trying to sell them into sending them money. So don't send me your money. Next, channel memberships. Here's my thought behind channel memberships. Check this out. Um, there are things that I can't, I can't. And this is what made me think about going and just setting up that button. So it's set up, and I think it's $9.99 a month or something like that. Or maybe I went $7.99, $7.99, whatever it was. I kept it really cheap. And people can go in, cancel anytime, whatever it is. But I thought if enough people went on, let's just say 10 people, decided to sign up for channel memberships. Those 10 people who decided to sign up can get access to things I cannot share and I would not share openly on my channel. Like what happened with Napleton's? Those you've been watching a long time, yeah, something happened there. And it was really, really crappy, the whole thing, how it took place, everything else. And uh, I got a little bit burned. I did get burned. But I can't get into it. I'm not going to bash them online. I'm not going to go into World War III with them. I didn't want to hurt my salesman at the time, but he's not there anymore. And there's some stuff that took place that felt very, very dirty. And I just didn't, I just didn't want to go negative on YouTube. But you want to know? That's where I can put that video because it's only going to be to 10 of you who decide to sign up. How about this? So many of you have beaten me senseless about the 170, how I pulled off the 170, and I'm not been able to get into that. I can't get into that. But there, it's just publicly, it would get me, it would probably cost me the car at this point. But in a paywall where 10 people want to know, if you saw me at Cars and Coffee, I'd probably shared it with you. But I can't openly put it on this channel and have 10,000 people view it, and next thing you know, my allocation's history for some reason. But if I'm sharing it with 10 of you that happen to sign up for this thing, and I know who the, I know who the 10 people are because you signed up, then I'll put a video there and, and maybe open up about that. And next, there's tons of stuff you all ask me to do. Finance videos, video, videos on investing, making money, getting a job, getting a raise, getting, doing better at your current job, getting promoted at your current job. None of that stuff would work on my channel. I'd have to start a whole new channel, and I don't know that I could start dedicating that much time to it. But there are private member-only live streams that I can do in the join, in the members-only area of YouTube where we can have those conversations. And if it's only 10 of you or 20 of you or whatever it is, that's a small enough group for me to go on there once a week, once a month, whatever we all decide and have those conversations where I can openly share and not and know that the whole planet isn't tuning in and you know critiquing the daylights out of everything I share with you all because everyone's going to have different opinions but at least it's just us just a small group and frankly I'm a lot more comfortable doing that and then lastly with the membership right now I am helping I am exhausted with the typing in helping but I love doing it. I'm helping so many of you with your cars, with your purchases, with your shopping of your scat packs and your Hellcats. You're sending me the actual, you know, financial breakdowns, the stickers, what happened. By the way, if you send it to me before you do the deal, I can help you a lot more than if you send it to me after you did the deal. I got one today. Actually, a few days ago, I just was able to get back to you today where, you know, I had to tell the guy that he, the dealership did him really dirty. And I don't want to be that guy to tell him that. But with the channel memberships, here's what I can tell you. If you're a member, and again, if it's 10 of you, those 10 people come to me anytime. I will even give you my private cell phone number to where you can text me and ask me questions about anything, and I'm happy to help you. There's a few people already that I have that relationship with, and I will put that phone number in that inside that members only area so that you can get it and you can text me you can even call once in a while. It might be harder to reach me because I'm doing a lot of things all the time between the family and the job and YouTube and everything else, but that's there as well. So that's it with channel memberships. Don't sign up. I don't want your money if it's going to irritate you, but it's there if you want to jump into that kind of that kind of stuff. It's just it's some, it's something extra. So I did it, and to my fellow YouTubers that have been yelling at me not to do it um, or to do it, 
and I'm telling them I'm not going to do it. I did it, and I'll let you know how it goes. And if people want to sign up, cool. If nobody signs up, that's totally cool too. I still love you all, and I'll still be putting tons of content out. So now let's talk about number two. Number two is there is no eco mode on a manual transmission Dodge Challenger. Of course not, because six gears like that's eco. If you shift it right and you make sure you're not, you know, you're not constantly, you know, foot in it, and you keep the revs down, and you do all the smart things you do with the manual, then you can you can improve your gas mileage. When I say you, I mean you, because I can't. I have not been able to do that. And I'll just show you here. There is no way I can absolutely control anything on these performance pages. So when you go into drive modes, you get valet, race options, auto setup, you don't get eco. Right here on a automatic transmission would be eco. You tap eco and it would make the car, I don't know, drive a lot more docile and at least fight your urge to drive it hard and give you a little bit better gas mileage. So as a result, I am definitely not doing well on my gas mileage and I'll show you all right now 11.2 miles per gallon and that is 100% my fault not necessarily the cars yes it's bad but with six dollars and 59 cents a gallon if you get caught in LA you're in California you're getting it over seven dollars a gallon no eco mode yeah it's kind of painful so I went shopping for daily drivers for like the third time this weekend yeah that'll get somebody to comment I don't know what to buy and of course Dodge is trying to sell me my Hornet it's still sitting there the one I ordered they're still saying we'll do anything for you to buy it we'll discount it as whatever you just come get that thing and take it off the lot I just don't have the heart to do that I don't think uh I don't think my channel would, would survive it. <laughs> so let's talk about number three. Number three, this is the same exact car it's been since 2015. Now obviously before 2015 the interior was different. The exterior and the taillights were a little bit different. I'll show you the taillights on here, which you all know. The taillights on the two, 2015s and up, they got that split to look more like the latter year Dodge Challengers. And where before that on the SRT8s it was all the whole light assembly was completely straight across. So this is the same car since 2015. There is like nothing different. They did nothing different. The interior is the same, the back seats are the same, everything is the same. They did nothing to change this car from what it was originally. And it seems like for like 2023, they could have done something, something they could have, they could have done. It would have just taken a little remolding of the dash, a little maybe an upgraded screen, maybe a software update or something that would have made us think that this one was special. Nothing. This is the same exact car for more money. And that's that's just ridiculous. I get it. Still love it, but it's kind of ridiculous. There's nothing changed. Now with the Swinger edition, you get the special edition stuff. You get the you get the white gauges right there. You get the little Swinger badge and you get the green stitching in the doors and in the dash which is kind of nice and you get the stitching in the seats and the green hash marks so at least that oh yeah and that strange metal wood grain kind of brushed aluminum but it's plastic little center dash part thing here so other than that this is the same exact car it has always been and next this thing came with basically half a powered seat half a powered seat now they definitely raised the price on the special editions gave us some vinyl stickers and some stitching and a badge and a little dash thing but overall it's cosmetic and then they specced it how they wanted to spec it and then send to the dealership we couldn't order these cars so they decided that you're going to get some things you're going to get some things you're not going to get well this comes with basically half a power seat so the passenger side it's 100 percent manual if you can see it's got the little lever down there 100 manual just a good old-fashioned seat but the driver's side which does oops which does have at least has the memories which i've never used in my entire life has still has this that co controls the back manually it's got the lumbar support and it's got the move up move down that and forward and backward other than that, that's the only part, only thing you get power for these seats for almost $70,000. It just seems kind of goofy. Like they could have made this power too. And I don't know, it is it is what it is, but it is nice just to be able to roll that thing up real quick. But yep, for almost $70,000, they couldn't throw in a couple power seats in this thing. 
no big deal, still love the car, but for the price, you think you'd get that. And next, they couldn't have just, they couldn't add a USB-C port. They had to just stick with the old USB. So this thing still has the same old USB that I got back in my 2017 Challenger. You've got the cigarette lighter here, you've got your regular USB, regular USB, and then you've got even got an input for like an iPod, which is which is kind of funny when you think about it. An auxiliary for like an iPod, that's just something else. And then you've got the same old little cigarette lighter plug over here, and I've got my power inverter that I use to charge all my work stuff, but you've got that. No USB-C. Like they couldn't just stick a USB-C. It wouldn't have cost them the fractions of pennies to throw a couple USB-Cs in here, easier to access as well as plug into all the new cables. So I've got different cables for every single car we have to be able to charge stuff. And uh, a little bit of an irritant. And number six, I believe we're on, is no automatic rev match. So the Mustang from like 2019 up has automatic rev matching. Now here's the deal, my dad, my daddy taught me to drive a manual transmission at 15 years old. Hell, I think I was 14 when he taught me to drive his big brown Ford Stepside pickup truck with and that's what I drove I drove a manual transmission till I was almost 22 years actually I think I was 22 years old when I got my first automatic so I've driven manuals for years and years and years and then stopped driving them one thing my daddy never taught me how to rev match because we were driving old pickup trucks we were not driving you know high performance cars so we weren't doing any of the racing stuff so Rev matching is something that I am not good at. I have not mastered yet, and I am not probably going to master anytime soon. And it would have been awesome if it just had it like the Mustangs have it. I don't know, it could have been a software thing, anything that could have just, at the very least, made driving this thing a little more pleasurable, but doesn't have it. What it does have, that I do kind of think is cool, that I discovered accidentally on a hill uh, one night going out to dinner with my wife and we're trying to get out of a parking lot that is a steep exit going up and then out onto the road was it has hill start assist which is pretty cool look at that hill start assist you turn that on turn that on and what that does is it keeps this thing from rolling back when you're letting the clutch out and you're on a hill so remember when we were kids and we would push in the clutch and let off the brake and roll back a foot into the guy that was too close to our rear bumper and then get the take off. Well, that happened to a guy named Andy in high school who parked his mini truck too close to my Toyota 4x4 and I made his hood look like a Pekingese puppy with the nose all squished in. So this keeps that from happening and it's kind of nice. I almost took it off thinking, no, I want the I want the real experience. But then I realized, why Why do I, the people are stupid nowadays. They're like on your tail so close. So it's kind of nice having that. I leave it on also in case my wife jumps in here. I don't want any risk of anything happening to this. And that's kind of a nice thing. Can you still smoke your clutch? Uh, absolutely. You can still smoke your clutch, try and take off. If you don't, if you don't treat it the same way and give it that respect, but it'll at least give you a split second where you're not rolling into somebody behind you. All right, now let's talk about the last thing. The last thing that is kind of stupid. And I've shared this with you all before without this little part. I didn't care that this was a special edition. I love that it was a manual. I like that the rims were different than any rims I've had on one of these things before. I've always had black. I do think this would look amazing black. And maybe I'll do that someday. But I do like this look. But this. This. The Swinger name. The Swinger name... We all know it. We're Dodge fans. We understand the 69 Dodge Dart was a swinger, and this is a throwback, harkening back to the, the Scat Pack crew, and it was, this was, it was one, of those, one of those cars in that, that group of cars. So they gave a little throwback, a nod to the original swinger and the 69 Dodge Dart, which is very nice and sentimentally cool. Unless you're like 90% of the perverted people out there that have to always make a comment, which I hear it nonstop, about this thing being a swinger. And you know what I tell them all? That's funny. Yeah, I know it means that. I understand what it means. I understand it means wife swapping and weird 
stuff like that. Um, have you seen my wife compared to your wife? We're not swapping anytime soon. That generally <laughs> shuts them up pretty quickly. Sorry, but man, have you seen my wife? It's really kind of true. I'm not trading. I'm not sharing her with anybody. Anyways, so, <laughs> so bottom line is uh, that's stupid. And I would be fine with that off. I even thought about having this stripe completely redone and put my OC Motivator logo there. Uh, but then it would take away from the special edition. And if I do have to sell this thing to buy the demon and you're not going to want it saying OC Motivator you're probably going to want the weird upside down pineapple swinger thing which yes people have said it at car meets said it at stoplights so you're a swinger huh it's just stupid it's never ending and it's something that you're going to have to deal with if you get this car so that's everything everybody hope you enjoyed today's video again you know click the like button click the subscribe button if you want to join join if there's enough people in there anybody if one person joins the membership i'll go in there and i'll start pumping some content out that i could never share on the open channel but if nobody joins it that's totally cool too i don't care i'm good i love that you all are watching my videos and we're having so much fun this last month beating up on the dealers but thought i would do this video since so many people asked me like is there anything you don't like about the car all you do is say you love it well yeah there's some things that definitely i wish would have changed and i just shared them with you right now and in the end nothing would make me not buy this car unless this was another year if this was coming out again in 2024 at a certain point i think we were all going to get really tired of the same exact thing being pumped out to us so they were going to have to do something update to USB-C, update the screens do all kinds of stuff at least do a little bit of body change just a little bit nothing nothing major just maybe a little tiny subtle change like their biggest idea they had since 2015 was like changing the hoods on the cars and like <laughs> making the hellcat hood from the year before the scat pack hood the next year that was the great best idea they could all come up with at dodge over the years but bottom line is this is a great car hate to see these things go away Damn, they're beautiful, and this one is my favorite. With that, everybody, take care. Talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.